So now let's talk a little bit about STPA. So when we do a, uh, an STPA hazard analysis, we focus on what are called control actions or unsafe control actions. And when we do the first step of an STPA analysis, we, we create the control structure made up of these control loops. And then the first thing we do is we analyze these control actions and we basically have a think about if that control action is provided under a certain circumstance, is that an unsafe control action? If it's not provided or it's provided too early, too late or in the wrong order, or if it's provided too long or too short, is that a safety related situation? And if it is, straight away we know that we have a potential safety issue we need to manage. Now when we move on to step two of STPA, what we're actually trying to do is understand, well, how do those unsafe control actions come about? What are the causal scenarios that relate to those? Now this is just a, a, a representation of a control loop. I've, I've made the actuators and sensors explicit. So in the previous picture, control actions and feedback, all I've done is expanded those and included the actual way that those control actions are implemented and how the feedback is provided. Now each one of these aspects all the way around here are potential ways that that unsafe control action could come about. Now I'm not suggesting all of those things could happen in a real, in a real situation because it depends on the design of the actual control loop, but some of those, some of those scenarios will be relevant. So an example about um, somebody driving a car, everyone knows how to drive a car presumably. So when you drive your car, you keep an eye on the road ahead and your, your, your eyes, your hands, your sensors build a mental model, a process model of the situation of the road around you, the environment, the weather, how fast you're moving, where you are in relation to other objects on the road. And that process model is kept up to date almost in real time, unless you're tired or drunk or whatever. And that process model helps you to decide what actions, what control actions you need to take. And obviously in the case of somebody stepping out in the road in front of you, if you don't detect that, your process model will not have that person within it, and so you won't take the control action to stop the car. So how could your process model uh, not have that person in it? Well, let's say, for example, it was dark, and your eyes, the optical sensor, was not able to see that person. Or what if you had uh, eyesight issues and you weren't wearing corrective lenses, for example? So that's just, that just gives you an idea of basically look at what the control actions are and then move back around the control loop looking at the various different components and how they can contribute to that unsafe control action. Now you'll notice that that includes failures but it also, can, can, it also includes consideration of things that may not be failures, they might be strictly successes but they contribute to an unsafe outcome.